Welcome to the podcast where relationships, confidence, and determination all converge into an amazing heartfelt experience. This is Speaking from the Heart. Welcome back to episode number 149 of Speaking from the Heart. Now, before you tune out on this episode thinking that's going to be about vision boards and you're going to say to yourself, I already heard this conversation from many other coaches, many other podcasters, all kinds of other individuals. What do you have to contribute to this? Give me a chance, and I promise you, by the end of this episode, you'll be singing another tune. Or maybe you might be changing your perspective of what you're seeing and believing. Because today's episode isn't just about setting goals. It isn't just finding relationships, confidence, and determination. It isn't about all the mumbo-jumbo that I usually talk about on this podcast. No. It is about manifesting the belief that you can empower yourself to see an envisioned future that will allow you to see not only the things that you normally won't see, but how you can consistently keep on doing that for the rest of your life. And I know I have a tall order, and I better have something really good for you to be able to share so that we can manifest this into a reality. But we're going to talk about vision boards today. No, I'm just kidding. Don't tune out yet. Listen to me. I know that sometimes it's really hard for us to have those aspirations, those dreams that we have, those things that we normally think about as a kid growing up, coming up and allowing us to say that we are going to believe it once we see it happen in front of us. Sure, many of us might even think of those celebrity lifestyles that we want to have. You remember Pimp My Ride? or even those celebrity house tours that were done on MTV back in the day? Man, would I love to have my car remade and live in a million dollar, five million dollar, even ten million dollar mansion of my dreams. Which nowadays, that's chump change. Fifty million, a hundred million, maybe even five hundred million dollars is more of the price tag that we might be looking at. But we can speak those things into existence. Maybe they might not come alive. But the opportunities in which we're manifesting, essentially in those TV shows, had come true for so many different people. Maybe even for the things that have happened in their lives, allowed them to manifest those existences. And maybe we were just skeptical and very naive in terms of our perceptions of what we could achieve. And maybe, just maybe, that's the reason why that those things didn't work out for us. We can be visionaries of our own dreams, our own aspirations, if we're willing to hold ourselves accountable. We've had plenty of guests, even on this show, talking about how accountability and even the persistence to know that we were doing something right were able to allow them to see the best versions of themselves. We've even dived into episodes this year that go way beyond even the context of what I ever imagined, even manifesting some of the things that sometimes we keep on putting off. But the biggest thing that I often think we need to look at, whether it's from life, whether it's from our businesses, whether it's our own professional development, or even other areas of empowerment, is simply feeling what we're feeling. Now, before you think I'm going to get all mushy inside and talk about my emotions of whether I'm really sad or happy or manifesting something in between, Hear me out with this, because I know I've been asking you to hold on, and I'm going to get to the point real fast. But the thing is, is that speaking these existences, these opportunities, means that we have to live with the emotions that we have deep inside of ourselves. It means that sometimes that disappointment, that regret, that inability to see the things that are out of our control, out of reach, even out of the realm of possibility, might mean that we have to come to the acceptance that sometimes those things are indeed out of reach, out of control, and out of the realm of possibility. At least for today, for that matter. I think that we often want to jump from zero to 100 really fast, and that's usually the society that we live in today. Whether we want to get in a motorcycle and go that fast down the interstate, which I often see, right near me, Interstate 81, running through Carlisle, Pennsylvania, or even all the other things that we often want to see happen instantaneously. That person being fired. That person getting their just desserts. 
Even the things that we expect immediately at fast food restaurants, service repair shops, and everything else that we engage with, we have to realize that good things come in due time. Time, sometimes, as we think about it, might not always be on our side. But that's a societal, cultural perspective that we have to start breaking. Millions of years ago, even with the formation of the Earth, it did not happen overnight that we were able to breathe an atmosphere and have all kinds of creatures and oceans and landscapes surrounding us like we do today. Even if you want to say that it was something that happened through God or some other scientific explanation, it still took time to happen. Even in the Bible, it said that God took six days to create the earth and took the seventh day to rest. Before I go into my more biblical chants, usually sometimes that happen on these shows, let me just say, for those that are atheists and scientific or agnostic for that matter, that's okay. I know that for us, it means that we have to have more concrete proof. We have to learn for ourselves what it means to get outside this box that we live in and be able to push ourselves and strive to develop ourselves in ways in which we never thought possible. In other words, the timing aspect is truly the key to unlocking all those riches, all those opportunities that we often don't see. And I get it. It's soon approaching the end of 2024. I can't believe it. How are we ever going to get this time that we lost already these last nine months and put them back into a bottle? Even be able to work on ourselves. We have so many things that are still left on the list from earlier this year. How am I ever going to accomplish those things? Let's face it. Did you really think that you were going to be able to do all those things and accomplish them, especially if they were very hard to do in the first place? I've had many clients, for that matter, which I've had to talk about the experiences of being able to understand the importance and differences between balancing what you can do in the short term and what you need to do in the long term. Part of this whole experience means that we have to gauge what we're able to do and what we're not able to do. And I've talked about on previous episodes the Pomodoro technique, even using the Kanban, as being ways in which we can progress ourselves into that realm of possibility. Sometimes we're visual learners. We want to be able to see what we're actually doing and being able to check it off our list. That's just the kind of people that we are. And the kind of clients that I have sometimes do need that reinforcement. While other people, where they don't like that structure, might want to have that flexibility. Even at the time of this recording, I have a potential client that is even saying to me, Josh, I can't live the structure. Structure for me can be too limiting. I want to be able to have the spontaneity and the creativity to work on the things that I want to work on with you. And that's okay too. We can adapt to those frameworks as well. You have to understand that good things come in time. I realize that in this impatient world of social media, on-demand service in which we can instantly go in on our phones, tablets, and laptop computers, even desktops for that matter, to order items that were oftentimes not available in stores locally, and get them in less than 24 hours in some cases, can be quite satisfying. It means that we don't necessarily have to put in that work. It means that we don't have to always spend constant amounts of time trying to figure out some other gimmick, some other way in which we can cheat the system to be able to reclaim that time that we quote-unquote lost through this process. But what if, if it would look like that if you continuously spent that time, even with the things that you did save, and you worked on yourself to see what that bigger future is, that bigger vision, if you will, to create that opportunity of a lifetime, but it didn't materialize until much later on in life. I've had many conversations, even with my listeners here, offline about the opportunities that this podcast, Speaking from the Heart, has created for me has helped me, through time, become a better person to make myself realize of the vast opportunities that I have lying dormant inside of me. But I didn't see it in the very beginning. I only saw it 
from the perspective in which I am trying to work on not just those opportunities that will happen in the future, but knowing that if I continuously work on it, it will eventually pay off. And I've had hints here and there of various guests in which I've talked about this with my Commonwealth career, knowing that one day I will be able to walk away with my pride, learning of all the years of experience that I've gained, all the relationships that I have formed, and being able to translate that information as much as I possibly can into what I ultimately offer to my clients right now and in the future. That's the same thing that has to happen to you in order to create that best value, that best version of who you are in the future, means that you have to spend a little bit of time today in it, even if there is an immediate payoff. And that can be one of the most scariest, most fearful things that you do because sometimes, and I hate to admit it, it might not actually pay off the way that you're thinking. Man, what a bummer. You've been waiting 11 minutes and you finally heard me say it. This is what you have to wait for? To have this ability to see and believe in yourself means that you have to put the time in and you might not get what you actually want? What hogwash, Josh. You're not an inspirational coach whatsoever. You're a fraud. You're a cheapskate. You're somebody that I would never, ever work with. What horrible advice. Well, let's be real. If I wasn't laying it on you today, do you think that you'll be able to get it laid on from somebody else in the future and be able to tolerate what they have to say? It's better that you learn it now in September 2024 than learn it later on, September 2025, September 2030, hell, even September 2050. Is that how long it will actually take you, your kids, and maybe even your grandkids to learn that the value of hard work will actually pay off, but you have to put the time in, the contribution, if you will, to make it happen? Yes. And trust me on this, it will certainly yield rewards that you never thought possible. The ability for me to be able to do this and even do the things that I'm doing in my own world have been propelled by just constantly working on myself. And I've had to make sacrifices, and I know that some of those sacrifices have meant relationships that haven't been as good as they once were, but also confidence and determination, even when it wanes, means that I'm able to work on myself and to build that structure, that stability, to put structure around it, but to help me create that realm of possibility. Those relationships are not strained. It's because I made the choice in which I can now go back and see what time has done and now I can have the opportunity to fix it. Sometimes it might be too late. I'm not advocating either that you need to pour immense amounts of time like I am right now into what you're doing. Because if you keep doing that for a very long time, you will burn out. And I've seen that time and time again with not only the people that have walked through my door here in my office in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, right off of Interstate 81, but also in my own life before there was ever a Carlisle, Pennsylvania, or Interstate 81 for that matter. And that is really the truth that I want to share with you all today. Not only is it about realizing what you can give today, but what you'll be able to see in dividends tomorrow. Sometimes time itself is not a great healer, especially if you do absolutely nothing about it. Even if you try to think that you're able to accomplish so many different things, so many different tasks, so many different opportunities that exist in front of you can mean that you can work on things that you never thought imaginable. But the truth is, putting into practice what you want to achieve in all parts of your life not only means that you have to give it in moderation, you have to give it time. For many of us, time might not be on our side. Maybe there has been a diagnosis in your family in which there's some chronic illness happening to somebody that you truly care about. Maybe there's somebody that is on a clock getting that job promotion that will take them across the country, maybe even across the world for that matter, and you might never see them again. Maybe for a while. But being able to speak into existence opportunities sometimes means that before those situations occur, or even when those situations do occur, 
that we recognize the concept and value of time. The old adage, seeing is believing, is for fools that think that maybe those things come to life magically. But in real life, there is no way that that magic can be replicated into the things that you can do today if you're willing to put in some hard work and use time to your advantage. Regardless of what it is, whether it's opening a business, being able to work on that relationship that is in tatters, whether it's with a boyfriend or girlfriend, husband or wife, or maybe it's that adventure getaway that you've been putting off on a cruise to that destination that you always wanted to go to in the Caribbean, or maybe it's something completely different. Nothing is out of the realm of possibility if you're willing to speak into existence and manifest that seeing is believing attitude by simply giving yourself the grace of time and the hard work that goes along with it. Because even if things are never handed to you, I want you to know that people will see you for the hard work that you put in if you're willing to put it in in the first place. So yes, maybe I should end with talking about vision boards. Maybe I should talk about manifesting ideas into reality. Maybe I should talk about how you can hit rock bottom, but get yourself back all the way to the top, having that pimped out ride, or even that $500 million mansion for that matter. But I think you know all that already. What I think you have to wake up to, though, is that in order for us to believe what we see, not only does hard work pay off, but time itself can start today to work in your favor instead of against you. And I think that that would be a wise investment to be able to see what I believe in you, an awesome, amazing individual capable of accomplishing so much, not only through relationships, not only through confidence and determination, but because you have a voice, and that voice needs to be heard, not only in the things that you've been putting off, but in the time that you're going to invest starting today. Thanks for listening to episode number 149 of Speaking from the Heart, and I look forward to hearing from your heart very soon. Thanks for listening. For more information about our podcast and future shows, search for Speaking from the Heart to subscribe and be notified wherever you listen to your podcasts. Visit us at www.yourspeakingvoice.biz for more information about potential services that can help you create the best version of yourself. See you next time.